I'm sipping, 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 I'm sipping. This is Sippin' with Sammy. I am Mr. Flash, it only the one and only Sippin' with Sammy. Sam Malone, Barstool Rug. If you ain't sippin' with Sammy, you ain't sippin' right. Please get your fucking life together. This is Sippin' with Damn Sammy, you them. Damn Sammy, you them. Damn Sammy, you them fucked up. Thanks, Sammy. Yup! Yeah! What's up with y'all? <laughs> Happy Thursday, happy hour, all that flyness. Hopefully everything is good with you. Everything is great with me. Um, please like comment share subscribe if you have not done so and even if you have we still appreciate it every time you do it we do see the results and we appreciate y'all today is a dope day man we might have to move your seat up a little bit you're a little far back oh. but um today i have right. a very busy woman with me yes a very to <laughs> quote um south on the scene woman with me Somebody that wears a lot of hats, please introduce yourself to my audience. Hello, everyone. I'm Jasmine Inez. I go by I Am Legit. Yes. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling amazing. Good. I can't complain. As usual, your earrings jump out. Yes. And that's you got the point. baby girl on there today. Well, no, that's me. That's you. That's me. That is you. I found an album that my mom gave me. It's a bunch of baby pictures. The same picture. It's like mm -hmm. a nineties package, you know. So yeah. I was like, I'm gonna take these and make some earrings out of them. That is so fire. Yeah. Oh, to be creative. <laughs> I, I, I'm creative in my own way, but not in those ways. Yeah. But um, I don't know where to start with you. First, we'll start with the earrings. You do provide jewelry and bags and garments for people that you create by hand yep. that are very intricate and very original. Yes. Um, shout out to my sis Red Snapper. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because she yeah. always running around in some of your pieces. Yeah. I see you pull up for her and all of that. Yes. But like, how does one start that journey? How does one have the confidence to say, look, I'm putting everything on your jewelry that I want and you're going to love it? You know what? I, I literally, because <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm, a, um, I'm a collector of things. Like I'll okay. hold on to pieces. I'll go on thrift a lot of pieces. And um, a lot of times people that they just donate things to me that they like old jewelry, toys and stuff like that. For you to repurpose. Mm hmm For me to repurpose. Awesome. And what winds up happening is I get to know my clientele. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just a customer thing. Like, I, I just make something and you just pick out what I made. It's right. like I get to know you and then you might say certain things that you like and colors mm -hmm. and after a while of me spending time with you, it'll collect. Like, yeah, you need a Hershey bar. Yeah, yeah. You need, like, things that I think would make sense for what it is you do, mm -hmm. you know? So, mm -hmm. um, I just, I really just love the idea of recycling and repurposing. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people do that in a lot of different ways. Yours is something yeah. that, and I know that there's a market for it, but I don't know nobody else that do what you do, how you do it. And I see you vending places, so it's like your table always stands out, and then you're standing behind there, dripped out of your own work. <laughs> and then somebody on stage probably has on some of your pieces. All the time. And so you're well represented, but how long has this been that you've been repurposing in this way? Um, so I've been repurposing for six years now. Okay. Six years solid. And um, it started because my son, he's nonverbal autistic. Mm. So I created some earrings that I felt like would get the kids around him because I love kids mm -hmm. but they would never like be like you know attracted to come over you know say something to me or like you know it's, mm. they're shy they mm -hmm. have their own particulars absolutely I work but with that community I created um, a pair of rubber duck earrings that was the first pair mm -hmm. from some recycled rubber ducks and the kids they went just crazy. I went in the classroom and they went crazy all Lit over up. me that was like the first time they ever like even said hi to me and it's awesome so after that that moving forward, I started making earrings for the moms because they were like, my son just keeps talking about you. And it's like the lady with the, the duck earrings. And it's like, they they talked about me? You know what I mean? Like these kids. And I'm like, you know what? I, I like this. So after that, I just started doing it with everything else. Like my costume started getting it. My art pieces. So mm -hmm. I have pieces. of. I'm working on the furniture line right now. Are and you? the furniture line has collectors pieces and novelty toy pieces on it. Wow. That yeah. is a good idea. I like that. Oh, it's... I can't wait for you to see it. That's a huge undertaking, though. Yeah. Where do you do furniture? You got a big space? I have. Um, I got rid of my couch. Yeah. <laughs> I know the feeling. I got rid of my couch. And mm -hmm. I only have my dining room table. And then the rest of the house is like a walkthrough. Mm -hmm. And that's all my art area. I do everything right there. 
Yeah, I yeah. know um, quite a few entrepreneurs that that's what it is too. Yeah, it, 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 it's 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 that time. It's time to just sacrifice space sometimes for the for the dream, because then you get to save some money while you're doing it. Absolutely, absolutely. And you gotta rent out space. You and you don't have to rent out space, and you. It's something about being in your home. I don't know what it is for mm-hmm. me, but like if I had a studio space, it just wouldn't give me that same. Like I could just relax for a little bit and still be working on something. Mm-hmm. And um, I just like that that accessibility. Anytime I feel like getting up to do something, I can just do that. Yeah, that's so fire. That's yeah. super dope. What has been the learning curve since you started repurposing things? Any mishaps? Anything that you learn from? Yes, all the time. Um, I learned that my costumes aren't for um, a lot of different types of folks. You got to make it pati- particularly for individuals. Mm-hmm. Um, and I learned that from a, f- a couple fashion shows that I've done. So it's like, you know, you'd have the models, they want to walk like Naomi and mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. And I get it, it's a fashion show, but I, I don't, I, well, for that one fashion show, I wasn't very clear on. You probably can't walk like that. Mm. Yeah. So um, I always like to state what it is that I do. Mm -hmm. And um, very particularly, I I, I address like to the models like all the time, like, you know, you guys don't have to walk like that in this at all. This Mm. is about being a monster. You know what I mean? Like, so create the character for the costume. But you know what happens sometimes? Sometimes people only know what they know. Yeah. Yeah. Or only comfortable with what they already have done and feel like they've mastered and yeah. they're not willing to step outside of that box, especially not in front of people. That is true. Yeah. It, it's it's an awkward... Um, you ever see the videos from the fashion shows where the guy's like walking like really all rough, mm-hmm. rough and stuff? That's mm-hmm. kind of how I, I, I tell them to walk because it's like, it's no reason for you to try and get Naomi in this. There's no way <laughs> you're, no you're going to do it in the hill and the net. It's a lot. That's a lot. It's a huge undertaking, so just mm-hmm. be comfortable and walk natural. And walk natural, or give that costume a character, like create your own. Which, when you and that's see what it, I would that think. Do? Yeah, that's what I would think. But see, that comes from confidence. Yeah, that comes from confidence. Yeah, and you and have confidence. Imagination so too. Yeah, and that I too. Think, you know, they're just not used to that. Yeah, they're not used to that. And even when it comes down to like you know, designers say, "Oh, they're just a hanger." It's like these are people with imaginations that have their own spice. They call people hangers? Yeah, they do. They do call people hangers in fashion. And I don't that's really... That's sad. Well, I, I kind of see where it comes from because I know a lot of the bad parts of it. But that's sad. But that's true, though. That's yeah. how the industry looks at models. They be like, you know, you, I just want you to be a hanger. I want you to wear this and it's about the clothes. And it's like, no, this is also about you. Yeah, you got to carry it. Mm-hmm. That's all the fashion. Yeah. Going off the runway, you got to carry your look. Yeah. Yeah. Or you just be frumpy and you be or carrying you frumpy be, by accident. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I think those are the best walks, though. I love those walks the best. Like, I'm like, see, that is, I will go to that show again just to see that again. Because, yeah. How do you walk? You walk frumpy? Do you model, right? Yeah, I model too. Um, mm-hmm. I don't walk frumpy because I've never gotten into uh, actual main mainstream of, of runway. Mm-hmm. Um, so I tend to do just the standard walk front and back and, you know, maybe a little bit of personality every mm-hmm. once in a while. But I never get into like the the whole aggressive, you know, type of walk down the runway. I you, do that on camera. You got to do it though. Mm-hmm. Next time you got to do it just because you keep telling people to do it. You yeah. got to show them how it's done. Yeah. You got to flip it. Be like, now I'm going to teach y'all something in real time. Because some people, you know, you can tell some, some people got shown. Yeah. You got to show up. Yeah. That was, you pop out and show. Yeah, right, right. That part. That part. That part. No, that's fly. But I mean, you curate. What comes first? Because you're an artist, mm-hmm. model, right. actress. Mm-hmm. Repurposer, mm-hmm. which is not really what it is, but yeah. <laughs> at this point, you're a jeweler, I guess, huh? Yeah, jeweler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, what comes first Um, out of all your heads? I might have missed a couple. Motherhood. That comes first. What's... <laughs> like, no. Always motherhood always comes motherhood, first. But what you know what started comes first? first? What started first I was the... Wrong. Um, you answered it right. I answered it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, absolutely you know correct. Called? Motherhood. You were absolutely correct. Um, because yeah. and a mother. Yeah, that part. But mm-hmm. um, as far as the uh, art goes, it was always drawing first. Okay. I started off with the, the doodling. I drew on everything on walls and 
that's how I'll she up. really don't want to be my friend y'all <laughs> like i despise people that are good with drugs because i can't draw a straight line with a ruler the mm-hmm. ruler always like bends and then it has this little slope in it yeah i'm one yeah. of them people so i'm not really good with the drawing i pay people to do stuff like that like, oh. yo draw me a tattoo because yeah, I, I the sketchbook thing that was that's what Everybody in my family started seeing it. I get sketchbooks for Christmas, and then I got crayons, and I got pencils. Then they started so they moving me up, it. pastels, Dope. and yeah. And then over time, I went to different art schools, and then I got into different mediums with different art schools. And like, um, I was at the University of the Arts when I was in seventh grade for, um, yeah, I know, right? Seventh grade. <laughs> and I'm like she didn't even look at me before she said I know what you looking at the screen <laughs> <laughs> I was there for um it was comic book drawing they had me wow. in an animation class so I was one of That's those students fire. for that yeah I see was, that was like my dream but right. I knew I wasn't getting well it. I can't I can't sit there and draw the same thing over, <laughs> over and over and again over. I no that's tedious I freak out yeah, I freak yeah, out yeah I cannot do it I cannot do it I did it that one course I was done that gave me, you know I was like yeah I'm good with this and then um I did your arts program I did fire. them did some murals fire. in the city I did a couple different where you things. got murals at um strawberry mansion oh mm. yeah yeah mm. i was a part of that project what is the mural specifically i'm trying to picture it it's a couple of them over there so it's one with like a bunch of um african-american leaders on okay. one wall it's mm-hmm. one with some kids on a wall we repainted that whole wall nice um oh it's a it's a mural by the zoo that you literally see across the bridge i mm-hmm. was on that mural before it's Oh, yeah. you lit out here in these streets, I was, literally I was outside. and that, that was all before i even got to eighth grade that was like from fifth to eighth grade yeah, I know. What kind of? So you a prodigy, progeny, prodigy? No, I wouldn't call me a prodigy. I would definitely say that I just I really love my my art. But that's a heck of a progression, even to be in those situations, and um, you got to be the youngest one. Yeah, I mean, there's some, <laughs> no, because there's some there's some prodigies outside. They're How really are they prodigies like, and you wasn't a prodigy? I, I, I don't know. I like to be a little bit meek with mine. Nah. <laughs> a little I'm humble. Trying to, I don't care what she's saying. You know? Yeah, so, um, but yeah, I've always kind of did art. And that's, I, every time I do one thing, it leads to something else. But that's, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you got to see that as a, as a young person. And a lot of people get that through sports sometimes and other ways. Yeah. But you got to get that through art. Like, it was... Oh no! I did this, and then I had this opportunity. I did this, then I had this and opportunity, I then that. I, and then I had a resume, and I ain't really think I was building and a resume. It just built. It literally just started to collect. Cause eighth grade, you leave, you go to high school. And right. I got accepted in the Chad Charter High School for Architecture and Design. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I'm I'm learning architecture at that point. Mm-hmm. That's ninth grade year. Mm-hmm. Then I'm doing regular, you know, visual arts and shading, and that must have been the best school in the world for somebody like you it absolutely was i can't even lie like i think that <laughs> no because i really do think that it was between kappa and that and kappa wasn't really i all... ducked kappa kappa called me every week leaving voicemails on my answering <laughs> machine it was a long time ago they wanted me to do my audition but i had kind of settled on ens but yeah. They. Yeah. They, they were. I mean, they, they were a universal kind of art school, but I really needed the specifics, the painting, the drawing, and all the other things, and then fashion design. That came later because I graduated high school and went to a college in California for fashion design. Oh, you done been around the world. Not really, but definitely what, oh, here. What What is the fashion design school in Cali you went to? Uh, California College of the Arts and Crafts. It sounds like a lot of people went through that. They did. They had a very strenuous program, but. Um, yeah, I didn't finish there, though. <laughs> reasoning? My reasoning, it was, like, it was a lot of money to stay out there, mm-hmm. number one. And, you know, with as an artist, and you got to get supplies, and you got to stay out there, yeah. and you got to eat. Mm-hmm. Eating is important. Yeah. Eating is important. Eating was what I did, especially out there. <laughs> you want to buy those supplies, y'all. I did y'all. that. I did that. She says, I'm going to borrow some supplies. I, I did, and... It was a beautiful time. Like, I loved it out there. You know, Berkeley College was, like, down the street from my school and everything. So you hanging. I was hanging out. And we had a lot of graduates that used to come back and, like, talk to the classes and stuff. We had people that graduated and went to Pixar. They went to, like, Gap. The Great. over the overhead of Gap. They went to the overhead of Abercrombie and Fitch. And they was in Paris and Rome. And these are my classmates. Great place to network. Right, right. And these are my classmates. So every couple of weeks, I'm like, this person went where? And they're like, yeah, they're somewhere in Rome or Prague or something. And I'm like... <laughs> really? <laughs> so yeah. 
That don't make no sense. That's a make because I'm listening to you saying Pixar. Do you say Gap? And people don't know. I don't know if they still are, but they were the number one retailer in the world at one yeah, point. Yeah. So even if they're four now, it doesn't matter. That's no, huge. it's it's, <laughs> it's just huge to be able to work in those places. Yeah. In fashion, and you I'm like sure. you you learning underneath the the goats of fashion. Like, yeah, I'd be really. pulling my hair out. I, I would have too. <laughs> <laughs> you got to sit in a cubicle all day and you got to come up with a design and you got to sit in front of people and then there is a critique and then it's like, oh. A high pressure situation. It's a lot of pressure. Where's my net pot? I need a net pot and a, and a, and a, and a, and a <laughs> cognac a chino. <laughs> Give no, me a cognac I tell you, I tell you. It, yeah, but it was a really dope experience. Great experience. Great really experience. So how long were you out there? I was out there for a year and a half. Oh, all right, yeah. So you had some time out there. Did Absolutely. you change your diet regimen? Because I heard they eat different out there. Was you um, avocado toasting? No, no. <laughs> but not, I ate the same things that I would eat here. But mm-hmm. what was made out there was like made by those particular people. Mm-hmm. So you got Indian food from like the legit right. Indians. You got the Mexican food from the legit Mexican. Yeah, it wasn't the Asian homie or the It poppy. wasn't the ones that been here for a while and it was raised up in the Americas oh, and yeah. all of that. So, so. so they barely speak of it. No. Say the number. And that food was fire. Number seven. It was fire. And it was the Chicago pizza out there that was like... Shh. They had banging Chicago pizza in Cali. I don't know who traveled out there and who taught them people that. But you know, that's what happens. Wherever you know for like this, you can go to Hampton, Virginia. There's a South Philly cheesesteak. Them people from South Philly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't dare eat a cheesesteak out there, though. No, that was but like for them, thing. that's crazy. Right, You know, right. for them, they like, oh, we got a... Cheesesteak, yeah. official <laughs> Philly, you know what I mean? Right. down the street, it's called a steak and cheese. Yeah. They mm-hmm. ain't even a cheesesteak. No, I, I wouldn't even try that, but... <laughs> but what gave you the um, confidence to go that far for school? Uh, that was really the only school I wanted to go to. Yeah, so that was the one for you. That was the... It was either that one or FIT in new york or parsons in new york Mm -hmm. and parsons is incredibly just yeah they they're stuck up (laughs) they're really stuck up i went to the campus one time and i was like this ain't this not really a vibe for me i don't really like this i talked to someone one time about um places i was thinking of migrating to at one time Mm -hmm. and um at one point it was atlanta and they said you in philly you were a couple hours, few hour flight away from Atlanta, a three hundred dollar plane ticket from Atlanta. Right. You were a couple hours from New York, and driving or catching a train. Right. If you go somewhere, go west. <laughs> and that was kind of it was more than that, but that was kind of the rationale. Like, right. like to do what you haven't done, you got to go to the other side if that's what you're going to do because you can still do all of that right now. Yeah, you don't you have can. to go nowhere. No, you don't. And I was like, that make a lot of sense. Yeah. And the person I was talking to was in TV. And at the time, Atlanta was becoming the new the, black The Hollywood. whole new Hollywood, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So it's interesting when people make their moves. Were you, disab- what was your feeling when you came? Did you come back? Did you? Yeah, came I came right back, back willingly, actually, because I got tired of going in the uh, financial aid office. Yeah, man. Yeah, I got tired of going in I don't now. like them people. I, it's, it's something about, like, the way that they have handle you. you. Yeah, like, it's. I went to financial aid at 445. With paperwork to turn in. I didn't need no assistance or nothing. <laughs> or I just nothing. had to, you know, they give you time, dates you got to turn stuff in. I'm like, I need to turn this in. Right. they like, we close at 5 o'clock. I'm looking at day clock. Like, I just want to turn this in. We right. close at 5 o'clock. It's 4.42. Right, right, right. That is amazing. For my money, for me to get education, and just this feel like energy. a lot. Like, obviously, yeah. I'm already going through what I'm going through. Yeah, yeah. and your job is your job. And yeah. they, and you know, I don't want to talk about your pay, but right now I'm not getting paid. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's paying. it. Just, just handle the business. That's My dad it. is giving me speeches right now. I don't want your <laughs> attitude. <laughs> yeah. So when you came back, what was the next? What was the pivot? I went right to our institute. Mm-hmm. So that's when the art institute right came in. Our institute, and so you downtown. To, yeah, I, I just literally decided to pick up where I left off, mm-hmm. and. Some for some reason it wasn't the finances because at that point I was paying out of pocket. Yeah. Because I was working and I was doing that from home and it was a lot easier because mm-hmm. I was at home. But then it was just like mm, maybe I shouldn't be just going to school for what it is that I kind of already do. Maybe mm-hmm. I should go to school for something else. But I just couldn't find out what that other thing was. Mm-hmm. So I put that down and just started to work and I just was doing like retail and things like that for a while and. Using your personality to make money. Just that. 
<laughs> it, was a, it was a dope experience too because of course you know you take over for stores you you know you in the Aldo and Nine West you, you know mm-hmm. H&M and mm-hmm. you're doing the storefronts and the visuals and stuff yep I've done roll out fold outs and all of that breakdowns and yeah but you know and then you get there and then you're sitting there and you're like yeah I'm making I'm making them all this money yep yep I can I, I should be doing that for myself I took a Gatorade break <laughs> to get everything straight right now I'm sitting here like how much Gatorade make how much right. money does it take right. to make some more money shout out to Jeezy but it's like Absolutely. the simplest way to do it it's like sometimes you just be like like when I found out that there's a think tank and a lot of money goes into figuring out that the new Pepsi bottle was going to be that color of blue because of the way that it captures your attention or whatever heck. Like, there's millions spent on what color this label is going to be, which wow. makes sense for when you know their reach. But at the same time, it's like, that color makes money. Think about the, um, mm. what's the name festival that Ja Rule was attached to? When they promoted it, they used big orange blocks on Instagram yeah. to get you to stop scrolling. Yeah. That was researched. Hmm. See what I'm saying? See, yeah, like, <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, and then every time that something they show you, you just like, that's it. Like, that's what it is. Sometimes you just got steal they shit. Yeah, you really do. You when you know they spent all. the millions, you be like, all right, sure. so I'm gonna make my page that color. <laughs> Absolutely, because it's just like it's ridiculous, and I'm like, at, at some point you gotta stop and say, you, I'm really creative. I should trust myself. The way I, I'm coming in here to clock in. I'm taking a break. You know, and I'm only taking a 30-minute break. I'm here all day. All day. All day. Yeah. And, and, and I'm the face of the store. They tell you that in orientation. That's they don't it. treat you like that. you the face of the store. you the one that's supposed to speak within 15 to 30 seconds of somebody walking somebody in. Somebody walking in. And then they had, like, little, like, you know, acronyms and things. Like, you had to pay attention to when they come in the store and they touch something. And mm-hmm. you're supposed to approach them at that point. It's mm-hmm. like mannerisms. Yep. And I'm like, well, that's all? And you make them buy it because... How you like you talking? It's what you say. Why the first fifteen seconds? It's like okay, yeah, I gotta get, I, I gotta use this in my own, on my own. Yeah, so you I steal can, that, run yeah, that, right, exactly. That's right, how you're supposed to ball. do it. Yeah. But the thing is too, like, you pick up a little bit, and then you look at some of that. Like that's what people that don't know people. I know people a little bit. I could just organically talk to people. Exactly. But I'm gonna take that one because that was swift. That get me the fifteen second draw, and I got the yeah. All right, because that's like the um elevator speech. Yeah, that is. That is the pitch. Mm -hmm. It's the pitch. And Mm -hmm. sometimes people don't bite. But it's always about, like, and what I what I was so discouraged about at first was I didn't have a location. Mm. But I was like, maybe if I just make a product that was just solid enough, and that's something that you know you had to come to me for, Mm -hmm. that's where the pretzel earrings came from. You had to come to me for So the pretzels was the initial staple? That was the initial handmade, all the way, personality staple for me. Okay. Yep, created. It's, this, it's designed after the city. Fine. So, you know, I was like, well, I'm a designer and I do jewelry and stuff. And everybody knows me from my recycled stuff. But what about if somebody else decided to mock earrings of mine, which they, they've attempted. A lot of people have attempted. I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, so, um, but the pretzels, they're hesitant about because it's like, oh, you definitely went took and the time that. to try and make what it is that I've been making. And everybody knows me for these now. So mm. it's like, okay, yeah. That's interesting because I would never imagine what was possible to not get re-emulated. But I guess they could still do the press. They can still do it, but, but it'll just be like, you I the know, press girl. Lady. Yeah, you the girl. You got that from that girl. Yeah, you press Philly Pretzel Factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yep. <laughs> she was, I think she called me a uh, fire pretzel factory or something like fire that. Fire pretzel factory. Yeah, like cuz that's that's what it is. You know like it's it's the vibe of the city. Like you know you can get a pretzel from Philly and uh, like literally you could turn three blocks and it's a pretzel factory somewhere. Absolutely. Or you know summertime coming it's a pretzel on the water ice. That's the like, you know, the go to and I was like, "No, we're going to we're going to do a standard pretzel shape, but we're going to make them in the earrings." Dope. Yeah. That's why, and they not small. They husky. Yeah, they can get they, big. They sit like, on your shoulder. They do sit. <laughs> they sit on your shoulder. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They the statement piece. No, dope. Um, I had something I wanted to say before that I want to get to. See you rocking. You got your natural. You got it tied up right yep, now. Yeah, I got it tied up back. right now. Yeah. But you be rocking the Angela Davis on a regular basis. Yes. Yes. I just started that because um. Yeah, there was a thing, right, where I went and was going to get my hair done and everything. They didn't, they weren't professional. Mm, and I was just go like, and you appreciate it. yeah, it was, it was no professionalism, and it was just like the 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 aggression that they had towards my hair. And I'm like, you know, it's because you're used to having somebody in your seat that has like a process or something going on. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like you. I think it's time I just stop with the wigs and things like that and mm-hmm. just embrace what it is that I have going on because if I didn't have my hair wrapped up when I walked in here, you wouldn't know what you was dealing with. Right. Yeah, so right. what am I hiding my hair for, you know? Right. And then I started to realize, like, it's 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 a lot... It's a lot of like beautiful qualities to have your natural hair. Absolutely, with everything that you might I love do. Your hair. Thank you, thank you. And like I just, I've been enjoying it to be yeah. honest. Like having my hair out and being all I gotta do is kind of. Well, it's not a kind of thing because combing it is. No, it's a is process. Wild. We 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 still we still that yeah because <laughs> yeah, it, it be rough y'all it be rough we still that so yeah so um I just started to wear it out and like the the reaction I've been getting from it is really just a positive and energy and about that's what it. I was about to say you get as many compliments or more as if you wore your hair any other way I'm sure yes but I think it's it's actually a lot more though see that's dope it's a lot more than when you have like the wig on and that's the, fire the, and I get it like I love my I love my wigs but I actually donated all my wigs dope so i didn't go back to to a um organization that yeah it's just like a, it's a private home for um young ladies work yeah private Fire. home for young ladies Fire. i figured and it was something like that yeah yeah Fire. i i donated them and i was just i just didn't look back right like i was like yeah i'm gonna just let it go and i'm i'm gonna do my you know my natural hair journey and all natural styles i'm gonna like twist my hair up and stuff like that too but like not with the weaves and stuff just my natural so it's gonna be that for a while that's fire that's fire i just wanted to bring that up because i've been noticing yeah and i'm like i like it it looks great (laughs) and you know i'm you know i'm natural not not like i couldn't like i was gonna get a weave but i'm just saying like when 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 you know what the process is and what people go through to get to these levels of that level yeah and have it still soft and looking like something and it looks like something you gotta appreciate it now, what I wanted to ask you before I got to that, well, what the question was that I was getting confused with it was, mm-hmm. when you're an artist naturally, mm-hmm. does it ever become a business or where's that point where you're like, oh, this is a business or I need to treat it different than, like, where does that point come? Is it when you throw the couch out or before that? Um, It was before that. <laughs> it was before that. The couch came because I didn't have space. Yeah. So I started to accumulate a lot of Inventory. stuff. Inventory. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, well, I need to figure out a way to organize this where I can sell it. It needs to be findable. Right, right, right. You know, and it needs to be able to be purchased so I can get it out of here because it's just sitting here now. It's beautiful stuff, Mm -hmm. but it's just sitting here now. And the only thing that really sit in the house now is the costumes. (laughs) Everything else gets sold. I heard that. Talk heavy. Yeah, everything else gets sold. And I'm, you know, I just like that that type of process, like from the start to the finish. And you see something come in and somebody's like, yeah, I just got to get rid of this thing and I don't want it anymore or, you know, whatever the case may be. And you start and you do your process on it and then you sit there and you're like, this is dope. And I'm like, and I, I'm a shopaholic in my own right, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I want to keep this. But then I'm like, no, this... This is worth for somebody else's house. I'm going to give it to somebody. and Somebody's going to purchase it. It's going to be in a nice home. So, I mean, after a while, you Aww. start to see something, like, you know, sift through. Mm-hmm. And you start to realize, like, this is a business. It's going to keep coming in. It's going to keep going. When the, when the piece goes out, something else is coming in. Yeah. So that becomes the business. It's funny because you just made furniture sound like puppies. And yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. That's because it is. A lot of things are like puppies. You know, you start, you fall in love with them. And you're like, I really do love this thing. I, I, you know, I think it's beautiful, and I think I look nice in it. You know, you try it on the head or you know the bag, and you're like, this is so cute. And you're like, but I can make this for myself anytime. You know, it's, I like to give it to someone else that wants to buy it from me, but also somebody that's gonna rock it and give it a nice home and deck out their outfit. You know, like my outfit gets decked out, but their outfit can get decked out too. Yeah, well, I think that's the thing too, right? Like, it's one thing to be able to. I see a lot of people. And they can dress that style other people, but while they styling other people, they completely relaxed. It's about making you as fly as possible. They got their baggy sweats and they, they crocs on or whatever have you, and yeah. you getting fly. And I think that that's a bigger thing. It's one thing to pose for your pictures, another thing to see your thing on the stage. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right, and it right, ain't just right. you rocking it. And it's sometimes I, I'm surprised because I'll see something that I sold to somebody, and then it'll be like months later, and they're mm-hmm. in a picture on Instagram, and it's shifting through, and I'm like, that's my piece. That is my piece. It's my piece. Yes, yes. And she looked good in it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, that's dope. I, I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that kind of stuff. So, And sometimes you just never know where it's going to end up at anyway. Like one of my mentors, she has like a large collection of my earrings. And she's flown my earrings everywhere. Atlanta, <laughs> Paris. I love that. I had earrings in New York and Paris when I wasn't there. You know, people calling me in different languages. And I'm like, who just called me? And she's like, yeah, somebody said that they wanted to pair your earrings. So I gave them your number. I'm like, oh, okay. 
That's so she's setting it up. She she's setting it and up. She's, she's on the she's on the yep. That's your fairy godmother. She is. She is. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Yeah, her name Chocolate. Chocolate. She's the model. You know, she you probably seen her work too. She's like one of She's the top model. I, pro- I think I met yeah, Chocolate. You, you I think she her. was in a movie recently that I um, went to the premiere of, and I oh. think she sat next to me during well, the premiere. she is dope. When no, I say dope, she's dope. If we talking about the same person, she definitely fired. But either way, we're going to make sure later. Yeah. Because I definitely need to know who that is. Because yeah, yeah. that's dope. Especially if she's showing you love like that. We got to support Absolutely. the people that support our people. Yes, because she'll she be like, I'm about to go somewhere. I'm like, where you going? She's like, yeah, I'm about to go you know, across seas. I'm going to Germany. I'm like, oh, all right. How many earrings you need? Mm-hmm. How many earrings you need? And see, when you got a business like that that works well with your business, mm-hmm. like that modeling and that level, mm-hmm. it's like that works perfectly. So I don't mind sponsoring that. Right. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, it's a sponsorship. Right. It's dope. Yeah, it's a play. It's part of business. It yeah. comes with the territory. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's, that's, it's a, it's a platform. We can share our platforms. You know, you wear something of mine, I wear something, or you, you know, you come on my platform because you took pictures in it and it comes on my platform. So, yeah, absolutely. We sharing, we swapping. No, that's fire. I love that so much because you have an ambassador. Yeah. Like an international ambassador that's not only somebody that has the network, but she out there showing you how to do the thing. And that's fire. She's doing, like, incredible stuff that I couldn't even... I couldn't even tell you. like About how, her opportunities? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I couldn't even tell you all of the details of them, but I just know that when she does, she just gets these positive reinforced, like, like energies from people. Nice. And then she'll like give my number and my, my inbox information and stuff and then they're just hitting me up all day and night. And I'm like, what did she say to these people? You know? Right, like, right, right, right. No, they seen it on the runway. They seen it on a mag. And they was like, yo, I like that. Where mm-hmm. did you get that from? And she's like, no, I, this is an individual piece. My sis made this for me and you know and that. So. And that's, that's reinforcement for what I say all the time. Because I talk to a lot of people that like to, and I watch a lot of platforms that are public and very large where we say stuff like, um, we don't support each other. We think that everybody... And it's like, no, there's a lot of people that do that. But mm-hmm. I know a lot of people that really go hard for each other in a real way that don't directly benefit financially from this person's situation. They no. just want to see this person win in a real way. And the only way to repay them is to do it for somebody else or to do, be great. Or both. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? You good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because I'm just like, yeah, I keep seeing stuff. So no, I know, I yeah. know, I know. Phone popping. They, yeah. they, they, they trying to go out tonight. You holding up the outfit? Yeah, probably. I don't know what's going on, but I'm about to find out because nah. that's I don't like the back to back. But you know, nah, you'll be good. Yeah. But um, when you said I gotta go to sipping with Sammy, let me sit down with Sammy. Yeah. What what put that thought in your head? What brought that about? Cause you know what I was. Um, Cause you're busy. I am. I am busy, <laughs> but. Like I I I watch your show. Mm-hmm. I see who you. you I see who you bring on. I, I see how you, you talk to everybody. I see the the questions you ask. They're really thorough questions. <laughs> I appreciate. And that. I was like, I remember one time you was talking to this this um, young lady that I know she does hair and she she sells beauty products. And it's a question you hit her with, and she sat there and was like, and I was like, yeah, I need some of them questions. <laughs> <laughs> I need some of that, cause yeah, that's energy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Well, I don't see. I have conversations. Right. So the conversation goes how the conversation goes. It should never go negative. You right, know what I mean? Right. Because I'm not coming in with that energy. And um, the people that come through here understand the platform. And the people that call with energy yes. that is opposite, I kind of curve it. Because I still get the call. I got to come through. Such and such as had was. Oh, you're not. Yeah, you, see. You, you got an album coming out? Yeah. We can talk about your album when you ready. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I can't, yeah, no. I can't and do that's, it. that's not. Like, I get it. Industry has their things going on. Everybody has their own things going on. But I just love when I see people, entrepreneurs, I like to get in the same circles. Absolutely. I like, you know, I, my, my, my sis tweet. Yeah. My queen tweet. So Shout she, she always put me around the right people. Tweet always said that you needed to come through it. Yeah. She had said that to me before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and she and she told me, she like, you need to be out there. You need to be talking more. You need to get your. Shells said something to me, you know, Shelly Shell. Shout mm-hmm. out to Shells. That's and my bestie. She literally, I, she became a mentor of mine, and that was Dope. like an incredible thing. So, fire. it's like these fire entrepreneurs around me, and they're like reinforcing everything I got going on. They're telling me, like, no, you about to go live. You about to start talking. You about to. I, we get it. We see the videos. You can lip sing on everybody. You can mimic what everybody else is saying. But what you got to say? Mm-hmm. And I was like, 
But that's <laughs> that's high praise from some dope people. Yeah. And we're in a blessed position that we're in the rooms with these people quite often. Right. And it, it, actually working together in synergy. Everybody's running different um f- portions of the event. Right. You might be vending. I might be hosting. Right. Shelly Shell might be hosting. Tweet might have threw the whole damn Everybody thing and, is just, and made the trophies. But and, I remember just sitting in the room and everybody was moving like pieces. Mm-hmm. Nobody was stagnant. Everybody was there with a purpose. Understanding. And agenda. Yeah. Understanding. They was there with respect. They was there with positivity. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was just like, that's good energy for me because I feed off of that. Especially yeah. now because it's like, yeah, I've gotten rid of some of the, the old like energies and people around me and puzzle pieces and things so mm-hmm. it's like no when i get people that that around me and they like they're doing it i don't even have to act because i see them doing it i can Shelly take notes been doing it in a real way and for like a long viciously time. too and still is and it's just crazy because she's seen it and i'm sitting here talking to you and i'm like you got to get your personality out there boy because you are a great conversation yeah you're a great person now. You're very inviting. <laughs> like, this is this is what they see in you. So, I'm glad yeah. that they told you because I ain't have to. No. And, like, I guess, I guess I've had, like, some setbacks with my thought processes and stuff with trying to talk, tell people what it is that I do. Right. You know? But then I realized that it's not... I don't have to say but so much because sometimes people have been watching you. Absolutely. So, and that's when I realized, like, when I realized the first conversation I had with somebody... Um, it was a podcast not too long ago, actually. It was uh, Uptown Standard one. Shout out Uptown Standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was on there, and then like it was the questions that they were asking me. It told me that you guys obviously been watching. Pay attention, me. Yeah, right. you've been watching what I'm doing, and that's dope because it's mm-hmm. like now I could just I'm comfortable enough to just say what it is that I do. Yeah. Like, and if you got it wrong, you you know I'm yeah no that's not it. I do it this way or I do it like yeah. You know. That's not a that's not even a problem. But definitely, and I'm just inspired by all of y'all because it's like you guys get on here and talk all the time. So it's like <laughs> you know like so what am I pinned up scared about? That's and I'm like you guys curse. talk all the, the time, time mm-hmm. like all the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like yo, I gotta get some of that courage. Yeah, I think you'll be fine. Uh, however you want to go about And see, the thing about it is you still control that. Yeah. You schedule your own things. You know wh- when you're comfortable doing certain things. You know when you're in a re- regroup and a rebuilding phase. I tore everything down. I everything? Did. I, I think I tore everything down because I stopped, I stopped modeling for a while. And then I restarted up with just the visual aspect of everything. Nice. Which was what I already did. Publications mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Re, re-showing all of the work or doing the step-by-steps. Right, right, right. So after I did that, I started to realize like, okay, so now I have to communicate what it is that I'm doing here. Mm-hmm. Then it was added on again. Then it was added on again. So before it was just like the the standard, you know, you see me being beautiful on pictures and stuff. Sometimes mm-hmm. I wouldn't even write a description. It was just like, oh, this is nice. Or I might, you know, tag the other brands that I, I was wearing or makeup or whatever. Kind but yeah. now it's like, no, I have to really go into detail. And I realized that I'm working because, on that. yeah, because <laughs> now I realize like, because people can see me and they can hear me too. Mm-hmm. And what I just spoke about, I have to write that also. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you get all of the different facets of it and the different dimensions. And it's like, it's, but like I said, I'm taking notes from all of y'all. <laughs> well, so, the beautiful thing is the reason that we're able to see what you're doing. One is the old fashioned way. We see you. Mm-hmm. You're out amongst us. I hug you yep. all the time. All you know what time. I mean? And, and and ask you how you're doing all the time. And I see what you're doing in that regard. But this social media thing, if you use it for the right purposes, you're able to peek in on people and be like, oh, all right, doing some more fly stuff. I see you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and 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 it equivalates to when you run into the person. You're like, since the last time I saw you, yeah. and you think about eight different modes that person's been in, and you're like, you still a savage. Yeah. And, and, you, see, and you can see them shed the skin, and then they come out, and it's like, Man, I thought you was done for. I'm like, no, I'm, I, you know. Nah, you still a savage. Yeah. You still a savage. You good. Yeah. But like I said, you got to regroup sometimes. Um, being a creative is a heavy thing because you have to be in a mindset to serve the people. You don't have to be in a mindset to create. Creating, you can do in a corner of your own house and nobody will ever see it. But in order to yeah. get amongst the people and yeah. talk about it and shop it and all of that stuff, you have to be in a certain place that's outside of your... Comfort zone, for real. Especially for you. For uh. real, for real. See, now I don't admire you as much, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm saying, like, because, I mean, you, you you do one thing, you get to another. Like, it was it was the modeling. I, I tiptoed into modeling for a little bit. And then from the modeling, I got on camera for vi- from videos and then movies and mm-hmm. then things like that. So it was like, you know. What movies? 
I've done a couple. I've done a couple of movies. I've done um, the one that I'm the lead in is called Let's Trade Places. Okay. By Lady Divine. Um, and fire. Yeah, it's fire. Fire. And that was in part one and part two. Okay. Then I did a couple of the Jimmy the Saint films and things like that. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was just like a like spot person. So, mm-hmm. I, but and all the all the movies I've always worn my accessories and stuff. Yeah. So it as carries. You so yeah. it carries out. You know, you get into the films and you flow from one thing to the next thing until you reach a place where you're comfortable being there and you just try and like zone in on that place and build a bigger bridge. And it becomes a thing. Like it's similar when I say like mu- music becomes classic sometimes because it's on a movie soundtrack Mm -hmm. because it's in a scene and you have other things to attach it to similar to you wearing your jewelry on on screen if somebody is referring to the movie they like you know the part when she was talking to the girl with the um baby doll earrings yeah the you know what i mean you become yeah whatever have you like and it becomes a thing and it's like no now you're like you're you're a prop also i am yeah. Your prop also, but the prop is your design, your creation, it's the thing that, that they could Google it and, and it probably, probably pop find up. you. Yep, it probably will pop up. So and and most of the time that's just how I've been operating. Like, you know, I don't I don't have to do I do placement. Mm-hmm. It's always placement. And it's the little it's little things that I can get away with. Like, you know, so but No, that's fire and it's and it's smart. Now the acting game is hurry up and wait. At least in modeling, you're getting dialed up, but you're doing something in the meanwhile. Right. How does acting help? How do you how do you adjust to doing the acting thing? Because I'm sure your anxiety of what you could be doing. <laughs> no, you know what it is. I think uh, because of modeling, I'm like more print model. Mm-hmm. So print model is a lot of facial expressions, a lot of like behavior. Selling. It is. Selling. It's that. See now, when you say like the runway, you say you gotta get on there and show the girls. Mm-hmm. Like the walking part of it, just take that out. Mm-hmm. But all of the other characteristics and the personality and stuff, that's me on camera. Yeah, you still got to stomp, though. Yeah. I'm not letting you out yeah, of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to I ain't letting you out of it. <laughs> I see what you did there, but it's cool. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what I do on camera, you know, like when they shoot me and everything like that. And like I said, I've been published. What they call it? Like, giving face? Yes. Yes, it is a certain a lot, of, a lot of face. It's a lot of face. It's a lot of, like, you just, you fill in You're a up. tiger. You're a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, it's always yes. been hilarious to me. But um, <laughs> I just said you're a tiger and lost my track. Yeah. But um, so <laughs> <laughs> when you say um, you pull little spot things. That's what it was. You were saying that you your placements and stuff like yeah. that. Do you run any sort of specials? Do you have anything coming up soon where like gifting um yes. packages and yes, stuff I like that? Yes, that's I am. Yes, I am. So it's my um my weekly show now. Is this the you know um creator's corner i like it yes and that's what i talk about like all the fashion stuff and you might see some diys or some back behind the scenes i might do on screen and things like that nice. and beauty tips and fashion tips and just just keeping up it's like a, it's like a qvc i'm about to say for yeah, yeah it's a qvc for the, for now for, for right now yeah. yeah so i'm building that up and i feel like that's going to be where i do the giveaways and things nice, like that nice. and you know like because i want to i want to show like like variety you know Mm -hmm. what i mean and i get i guess that there's a lot of different things that i might be you know willing to just part with and just give to somebody Mm -hmm. you know just because they are doing a crazy job in fashion or and modeling or something like that you know Mm -hmm. like just something like that um you gotta do a prime giveaway well i see now i've done done that that before. before I've done that before because I go to thrift stores and I usually upcycle by taking from one thrift store and taking it to another thrift Mm -hmm, store mm -hmm. and seeing what they give me. Mm -hmm. But there was a couple of dresses that didn't get sold. Mm -hmm. So I ended up just giving them away on my front lawn. But with the pieces, with the jewelry and stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you? No, not with my jewelry and things. But these prom dresses were like pieces that I've added to. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, because I was going, yeah, there was supposed to be like a couple of different You skipped that part. Well, I wasn't, you know, I, I assumed no, that it was No, you don't like, come on here to not tell us the <laughs> I whole. assume you probably would have got it. But yeah, it was yeah, like something humble that shit I like. At the door. I, like, you know, just like embellishments, flowers, mm-hmm. toys, whatever I might have sold on there. And they didn't sell or the person didn't come pick it up. And, and it's like, I'm not going to keep it. And I'm not going to wear it because it's not my size. Right. So, yeah, I wound up giving them away. And the young ladies had a great time. They rocked out. Killed it. They rocked out. I remember this one girl. She just, she was like, I just love this dress. Like, I don't want to take it off. I'm like, you're going to have to take it off. <laughs> <laughs> take off the dress. <laughs> Make sure you don't take it off till you back at your mama house. Right, right, girl, right. Girl, 
That is hilarious. So, yeah, so it's been things like that. And then, of course, there's been other, like, giveaway stuff, you know, for baby showers. Nice. Or, um, uh, not, it's, I think it was a wedding. I could be wrong. It was a tiara that I had made. It nice. was all wire work and I wasn't going to use it again. So I was like, you can have this. And she was And like, we black, sure. so I ain't trying to make you give away all your wares yeah, for free. No. But people like to hear about a little play, a little yeah, discount. No, definitely <laughs> not. But I, I understand there is all types of circumstances why somebody can't have certain things. Absolutely. And um, especially because like how often are you going to come buy something like this? Mm-hmm. And if I'm not using it, but I think it needs, it deserves a good home, who better than somebody that wants it, but also is going to, you know, be appreciative mm-hmm. and give it to them. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Maybe the answer may be redundant, but I'm curious. What? You're at a networking event. Yep. Similar to the ones that we're at with a few more Suits in the building. Okay. A couple more ties, a couple more, you know, dresses in the building, along with the hoodies. Okay. What do you specifically bring into that room, energy or personality-wise, that you know that you come with 100% every time? What do you get out the car knowing that you're going in there to do? Well, um, I'm going in there to make an impression, for sure. But? Um... Because <laughs> it, it depends on the individual. Because mm-hmm. all the impressions are all different. Mm-hmm. Like, and I can be quite a character when I go out to events. I, I've, I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, like I said, I purposely do things to get the certain type of attention. I don't have to go up to you sometimes because it's like I, whatever I have on, you probably be like, "What is that? And why are you wearing it?" Like, and I've gotten used to doing that because I started with like a few costumes I wear to the supermarket. Mm-hmm. That was my practice. The supermarket is a vicious runway for, oh my to God. try something out. And it just, you can just see. Like, they shoulders be down, so they be looking. And it makes people uncomfortable a little bit. When you're wearing a, a costume with like a helmet and you in there picking fruit and they're like, why is she in here like that? <laughs> with, you know, like platform boots and how does she drive? And it's like, yeah, I was, I draw it, but I had to come in here. I wanted to see what y'all thought about my costume, you know? So That is hilarious. Yeah. Because <laughs> the weirdest thing, and I say this all the time, women compliment stuff that they like as much as they compliment stuff that they hate. Right. They will be staring at your hair because it look like a blow pop, and they'll be like, it look cute, girl. Yeah. But they really are like, what the hell did she paint her hair red and pink for? And and, and so it's like, it's weird to, how do it you doesn't, read? It's like, because you know what? When they say notoriety is still... Like, you still getting something from that. Yeah, You know what absolutely. I mean? So, attention it's like, even attention. if it makes you uncomfortable, like, it makes you uncomfortable, I'm fine. Not you. Yeah, I'm and fine. And that's the it. important part. That's the important. That's but what that's I'm getting from you. that's also where the impression is going to come in at. Because no matter what, <clears throat> if you really didn't like something I had on, you're still going to remember me. You're going to remember me. And the fact that you gave me a reaction meant that I was approachable. Mm-hmm. It means that you could have had a conversation, and or that you did, saw me. or did. So and you, you seen me. me, you seen me. No, I'm, and I'm available. You want to have a war of wits? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, and I just, I, I like, I love that. You know, you hear you. Wait, well, she was in the room with this, this, just dress it. That just didn't like it. Da, 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 da. It's like, yeah, well, you're talking about that dress. I never you heard, know. you know what, I'm, we're around a lot of our people and people that respect creativity, mm-hmm. but I've always seen you get great reactions, um, or your pieces, because mm-hmm. like I say, I'm around Snapper a lot, mm-hmm. and she be rocking it, and I've seen people who have great reactions to your stuff, and I think that, um, one, like you keep referring to it as costume, costume jewelry has always been a thing, and for a long time, it was redundant and corny, it was like faded out. Right. It faded out. You, well, because it's what they were trying to do with the costume jewelry. Okay, They explain were trying that to, to impersonate real jewelry. Right, and right, 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 right. costume jewelry isn't real jewelry. You know what I mean? And it, I, wasn't, I, it, was, it wasn't fun no more? The way I explain it to people is always this. If you have to imitate it, then it's obviously going to be interpreted as fake. At some point, it's just going to run that. But if you already know that this is just for the show, this is just for this moment, this is just for this this... This photo shoot this or look. this video, this movie, mm-hmm. it's that's what it's for. It's a look. Like I'm not I'm not rocking a, a crystally big pendant on my chest 
and saying it's real and it's really a knockoff. You know right, what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. Or, you know, it's the same things. So it's like, you know, just be evaluate how you want to value it. That's why that's the importance of the whole upcycle thing because it's how you value your own stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And upcycle has been a thing across fashion for a while now. Mm-hmm. Um, denim has been upcycled. They they doing flannels all type of ways. Oh, and, denim is my favorite. And all type of stuff. That's my favorite upcycle work. Yeah. Denim. I might yeah. need to get them. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love I love me a good denim upcycle work because that all the different types and you sew the it's cotton. That's mm-hmm. real real cotton. Like Absolutely. that's the heavy stuff. So I love it. I was a um denim specialist at the Gap. <laughs> Back in high school, yeah, I know a little bit about a little bit about um the quality of denim and all of that stuff, right? And, and just the durability of it, and yeah, and, and the yeah. durability is sickening. It's like ridiculous. it's you can really do some damage to, it and it still will, the value never really goes anywhere because denim is a practical work pant. Yeah, it's a practical it work pant. It is, and and they'll charge you. Three thousand dollars for some remade for Levi's. Some pants. Yeah, like, <laughs> crazy. Like when I see the price, I'm like, I'm like, "What? Are you serious? Like I could charge that?" No, it's decent. Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> oh, I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> you tear the edit that up. I listen. I'm, I'm on it. When I see stuff like that, I see what can be sold for a certain price, and I'm like, "Did I read that right? They they did that? Okay, I'm gonna have to step it up a little bit." Bucket list to go to up your game to mm-hmm. study or to learn. Like, where would you travel to, whether that's in or out the states? Because you seem to know a lot about the most prestigious places in art and fashion. Yes, I do. So, uh, where's, where's, what's on the but list I know of like? I, it wouldn't even be too far away. It'll be like Phoenix, Arizona. And all which the reason is cool. why is I'm, I'm obsessed with that area. Like, I'm obsessed with that area. I loved it when I flew over it in the plane. It's how it looks on the ground uh-huh. and everything. And I'm just like, what's that spot you know like i'm like oh what's that um and i just like the uh, culture that's around there because i stopped in the airport a couple times and looked around and just the airport is different sassy artsy it's just like wow oh how they carry it out in the desert you know like so yeah i'll probably be there and only because and then you can use like the materials around you in the environment to make other materials like i learned how to make like natural dyes in college nice so i can go and get like scrape some dust off of a, a rock or something out there be this red color and just it's a natural dye now and i have natural dyed clothes or you know stuff like that that's crazy um where was it cancun i got a mud shirt yeah it was orange and it, it was dyed orange with the mud with the mud the clay in the mud and it had a picture on the front that they did with the and it was with like stuff and i watched it a few times and all it went with it some dope pumas i had as it long fire. as it's all natural cotton you can dye anything with natural t- natural dyes like i've made stuff with berries made stuff with um well, yeah, with, with um nails you know rust from the nails yes yes you yes. put them in a the jar and you put that in the jar that's probably dope on dental it is it's probably fire it on is dental. it's definitely fire yeah, you know I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say you know I know. I only said it because I thought you knew. I was yeah. I was checking. Yeah, and it's also when you tell people like, oh no, this was made with like tools. Mm-hmm. It's like it's made with tools. How? It's like yeah, the rust. But I think that's where we are. I think we done did everything regular back and forth, back and forth. We went baggy slim, baggy slim parachute, baggy slim, baggy slim parachute. Right. Like we done did everything but manipulate the things that we already have. For what fits you and not what fits the mannequin and right. what everybody else is able to get to. Right. You got to be able to be couture and boutique without the budget sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And because you still is, you're around, you walking around runway every day too when you walk down your hallway. You know I'm at work like all the time. everybody running their own race, but you want to be fly in a different similar kind of but way. different way yeah. without looking like you're, you you got the knockoffs like everybody yeah. the Prada boots with the pouch on the Say, side uh, and the Aldo had a pair when people, when people go and buy it that's what they think in their head this looks like that boot yep this that's why they gonna pick it up so it's like even if you did pick up that boot <sighs> makes me itch a, a little bit I never get too upset about it because I mean they kind of cheat off of each other all the time you know like all no the they brands, all do they all wear I'm, I'm they make the same aware. shoe very but aware. like if you take some like my favorite thing is the fake uggs i always i just like i love them i because think you're supposed to paint them you paint on them I that's exactly what i was about them. to say you, paint them, you throw <laughs> something on those and you can wear them and now it's like oh she's a knockoff ugg it's like no it's just my shoe it's art yeah it's that's piece. it that's actually it. it's a piece 
Which is different because in fashion, the pieces, you know, you can't get this everywhere. This is one you of those. You cannot find it nowhere else. And that's yeah. why it's my favorite because it's like, it's... You be burning them fake Uggs down. I love them. <laughs> I absolutely love them because I dare you to say, oh, that's a fake Ugg. It's not even an Ugg. This At is all. not. This is a legit. This is, this and is now, fake. actually, Uggs have so many different styles. I actually have a cut of Ugg that most people don't have, but I, I thought it was dope. Mm. But, like, now that's just a style of shoot. Because just like they've emulated all the other styles, similar to like a Skechers or whatever, of all the other boots, there are other companies that are making quality of that that right. same style. That's right. become the way. That's the what slipper, I'm saying. The slipper look is in. And they, they take the same copy and just make it again and again and again, like Bear Paul. It's like, Bear Paul, we know what you're doing. Crazy. We know what you're doing. You know what was the wildest? <laughs> What's my man name that had the... um. The um Pharrell was rocking with the fake Air Force One looking joints with the stars on. You talking about his shoe, the race, the race shoe? No, no. Before the Adidas deal, okay. The um joints that um him and the um Clips and Nori and them was wearing that looked like Air Force Ones, but they was patent leather and they was colorful and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Damn, with babes. No, were they babes? They might have been bathing apes. Yeah, they was babes. Babe sneakers. The guy that um made the babe sneakers also made the bootleg sneakers. Yeah. He, same well, warehouse. I was watching the House of Gucci. Do you know how genius that is? I was watching the House of Gucci, and I think that that's what Gucci decided to do too, because his for his first wife saw that they were doing knockoffs. You know, she seen that her like maid had a knockoff. Bag. I was mm-hmm. like, Where did you get this from? And I know you can't afford it. And it looked all right. It looked really good. So mm-hmm. she brought it to her husband, <laughs> and her husband was like, "Why should we care if they're buying that? You know, like they're they're imitating our bags." And she's like, "Well, I don't want them doing that because it's our name." But he's like. He got ahead of it. You know, mm-hmm. he started providing them the material, the material to, make the bags. to make the bag so they still paying. Because you still getting the money. Yep. You still getting that money. That polo don't hit TJ Maxx by accident. They make enough so that it rolls over. It rolls over. And then I, I read a story about Gucci where they burnt a bunch of shit. Because they yep. was like, you ain't going <laughs> to. It don't even cost that much to make it. Now, I'm not, no. not, not Gucci or Louis or any of that, but like the other brands. In fashion, the markup is 85%. Right. Right, that so don't you, matter you're what. charging us like five hundred to fifteen thousand dollars for a bag. I'm talking about Birkin, mm-hmm. because and it makes it, you making it for what? What a dollar, two dollars, fifty, two dollars fifty cents. Like somebody is not even making two dollars and fifty cents in their check for making that bag, and they're there all day. When I was younger, I used to buy a lot of Gucci sunglasses. I was obsessed with them, right? Mm-hmm. The real ones. Right. One day I went to a Gucci store and said, "I'm gonna get a jacket, weather changing." Right. I looked at a suede jacket. I looked at a varsity jacket. I looked at a leather jacket and maybe a wool jacket. Guess what? What? All the same price. Yeah. $3,500. Yeah. <laughs> it's how, it, it's, 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 don't it even just, matter. It's, like, it's, it's not that. Like the varsity joint should have been a little cheaper, right? Like I don't, I don't think, know. Or the no, wool would. Like, nope. it's all, and I was like, you know what? I'm not playing this game with y'all no more. Yeah. This is weird. No. Nope. Birkin bag. Because I'm going to wear that joint one. one time. Somebody going to take a picture and I'm at the... Tuck it till next winter, <laughs> next spring. Birkin bag, whether you get one that's like this big or this big, same thing. The basic bag is gonna cost you fifteen grand. And you that's gotta buy other bags to get on the list to get that bag. You gotta, you got to, um, you gotta be known. And yeah, I heard it's like the, the watches. Yeah, it's like the watches. You gotta be known in order to get on the list. That's crazy, cause you really got these dudes out here buying a a lady. Every bag, thousand dollars worth of a bag. Oh my god, that yeah. must be the the best pretzel in the world. Listen, I, I, w- I would like to have that. that. Is the best salted pretzel I ever. I would like to have that for myself. I absolutely <laughs> would. <laughs> That's crazy. No, like it's so many intricacies to this to the to the fashion world. But to be somebody that just can create a look, like it got to be so relieving. Like I had this problem, right? Yeah. I'm from Uptown. We like to shop. Right. We like to drive. We do. We do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I had this thing where every time I had somewhere to go, it's like, yo, I got to go buy something. I need something. I need something to wear. I need something to wear. I got to go get something to wear. Yo, what you doing today? Let's run tomorrow. I got to get something to wear tonight. And my man said, we got to stop doing that. He said, you got something to wear. You do. Either you being lazy or you trying too hard. No. Because you, 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 you want something new. Right. But you have to change the need. Like, you don't need anything. We shop every week. No, we don't need it. We don't need it. But I feel like because, you know, you from Uptown, you got something flashy. Mm-hmm. So, you're going to take pictures in that flashy thing. And it's going to burn out. And then, the next time you go out, if you decide to wear it again, you're going to take a picture in that flashy Psst. thing. 
And then the next time you wear it two years later, you're going to take a picture of that flashy thing. And it's going to line up. It's going to look like you've been wearing that. The same thing. Exactly. Every time I took a picture. Every time you took a picture because it's that thing you go to. So that's what one of the... I noticed that a lot of the times when you're uh, a label person in fashion, they use very simple, simplistic things that you can't really identify unless you see like the pieces that they wore on top of it, the layers. And they also return stuff. They also do. They never. Photo first shoots, of all, celebrities don't even buy all that shoots, stuff. They the don't. stylists bring it to them. They wear, they wear it. They give it, it back give to it the back. stylist. The stylist take it back to Neiman's, and Neiman says, "We take everything back." And they don't even have to pay for. It. Sometimes they just give them suits the thing. and yeah, dresses the look. and gowns. And well, when you rich, you don't spend money, or when you lit, you don't spend money on, on stuff like Mm-mm. that. You don't, and you don't have to. Mm. They be spending most of their money at Walmart on emergency draws. <laughs> That's where they spend their fashion. I would, at. I, it would be Target for me, definitely. But you know what I mean? Yeah. When you go on the road, it is like, oh, you know, they always got some draws. That's it. <laughs> they has, you, you're getting the benefit of them, the name, wearing your stuff. So they're putting you all the way out there so they can have it. Well, guess That's what? That's how I would see it. I, you wearing my stuff? Like. You know what you perfect for? What? Met Gala. Yes, yes, one day. Met God. I'm gonna get there. It's I need somebody there. on the Met carpet. Or yep. I need you. I need matter of fact. I need you flaring a train for him. Yeah. So you there too with your joints hanging? I just would love that. Just in that whole atmosphere, hearing the conversations and stuff, because that's really where the fun takes place in the back of the. Uh, the stage oh, so you stuff. know you got the backstage stories? Yeah. You really what? in there? That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I like literally, literally been involved in a lot of different stuff where I'm just like, I'm just take notes. Yeah. So what's the like? Cause Met Gala weirds everybody out because none of us understand it. Yeah. No, it's more so like um, it's just it's it's a platform opening for other designers, the ones that aren't really well known, aren't really seen all the time. Mm-hmm. You hear about certain names all the time. You go on other red carpets and stuff, but it's like these different designers, you might have seen them at random. Maybe That's like, why I see a lot of minorities sometimes. Um, yeah. Because yeah. it's it's hard to it's hard to get your way through in fashion, you yeah, know. It, it really is. So you have to make something that is just super. You can't resist not wearing it. Hard to get your way through. Kanye was begging niggas. Yeah. <laughs> Kanye was begging but Polo. That, but he was one of the innovators as to how everything branched open. Mm-hmm. He was one of them people that was knocking through. No, and and I saw that in hindsight, yeah. and I think he knew what he was doing, but there was some choice words that he used in those speeches that was just so cringy. Yeah. But, you he, know, but he did that for the same reason why I would wear my costumes. Because shock value. Because and you're also going to be talked about when you go home. These purple, they wasn't even thinking about Kanye. He go home, they talking about him now. Now they researching him. They looking up. Well, you, can you believe they replaying the video over and over again? Did he remake slave clothes? Who's Kanye? <laughs> you see oh where they show God. how all, this, <laughs> all the shoes look like this? No, because you know what, Kanye. <laughs> no, I get it. He got he got some things with him, y'all. He really do. But I I just feel like he is super genius. Brilliant. I think he is incredibly genius. Brilliant. But, when he had no, because let me tell you how let what? me tell you how important it is about your name in fashion. He had all of the clothes. It wasn't in the fancy store. Mm-mm. It wasn't in a, a, a mall area or Mm-mm. nothing. He put them in giant trash bags. bags. And in a major came, retailer. There was lines of people. Digging in trash bags. And they were digging in these trash bags. You don't even do that in thrift stores in Philly. You know it what I'm saying? It felt like, well, what's the name of them be doing with people when they just playing with you? Like, you just going to come get it regardless. So not, here. And that's what he, he, he betted on it. He yeah. knew it's not even about how something It became a marketing scheme. And he he killed it. It became a brilliant marketing fire. scheme from dumbing down branding Even marketing. The, the clothes were already like that, mm-hmm. but the fact that you literally and they didn't you presented walk out, it that way. They didn't walk out with a fancy bag either. No, they walked out with it in their arms. Yep. Yeah. No. That's a fact. Yeah. I ordered my vultures. And not shirt, only so. not only did he just create this whole lane like oh no it's really just about the name and you don't need to do too much but he also made it very clear we don't need a lot of the other things that stores be having the little extra tags and the little extra stickers and the little extra bags and the little extra. He literally saved part of the planet with it. That's why I was just like, he killed that. Well, the most waste is from retail. It is. Uh, I, so that's why upcycling became such a thing, because we blame y'all for why everything is falling apart. That man well, not is. you, because you upcycle. Yeah, I upcycle. <laughs> but all you, of his you clothes. You repurpose. All of his clothes, everything that was there was all repurposed, recycled, plastic. That was just these giant bags for the container. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Got to give him What back. is it? PRPS is all... Um, he was barn diving for dental. Yeah. Yeah. I That's what that. I do. I do dumpster dive. You dumpster dive? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. And I enjoy that actually the most. I do. I, I really do. You can't. You wouldn't even believe like some of the Like a little ninja. Stories. 
literally, I would climb in. If it's like the uh, the back of the thrift store, because yeah. that's where I go, because that's the clean trash can. It's not like somebody's random trash. No, I know you ain't but behind like, the apartment building. No, I be in those thrift store dumpsters and just I see it's something. Lock your little behind up. Oh, they they probably been looking for me, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they would stop me for collecting trash. That would be like, really? I you gotta get to a shiesty mask with a pretzel on the top. <laughs> <laughs> get a little alarm on my car. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's fire. Definitely been great talking to you. Yes. I had a great time. Yeah. Um, how do the people keep up with you, get in contact with you, preview your wares and so forth? It is, I am on Instagram right now. I'm working on my website, but I am on Instagram right now at Jasmine Inez. So you can type me in as Jasmine Inez or at I am legit. That's letter I M L A J I T T. Or you can look me up on bizarrebeats.com. Well, Bizarre Beats on Instagram is B I Z A R R E. B E A D Z. So that's the two for right now until the website goes up. And that's just going to be legit.com. Nice. So that'll be it. And that'll be everything on there. There'll be merchandise. There'll be houseware, appliance stuff, furniture, kids' clothes, costumes, headpieces. Nice. And you can also do custom orders on there. Nice. And she is one of those people that has two first names that you can trust. <laughs> It's okay. Yes. She said Jasmine Inez. Don't get scared away. She good folk, Jasmine man. Jasmine Inez. For sure, for sure. Okay? Like, definitely trust me with your project because I do that. And then, you know, of course, the, the backdrops and stuff. You know, that's the custom order. So, you need, like, a real setup and you need somebody to be there with you. I don't mind diving in on that. So That's fire, man. Yeah. So many heads. We need a part two. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. Talk Thank to you all soon. Tap in next week. I'm sipping, 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 I'm sipping. I'm sipping. Oh. This is Sipping with Sammy I. I am Mr. Flash, it only the one and only sipping with Sammy, Sam Malone, Barstool Rug. If you ain't sipping with Sammy, you ain't sipping right. Please get your damn Sammy, you didn't fucked up. Thanks, Sammy. Fucking yuppie transplants. <laughs> Move the fuck out. Get out of our fucking city. You ain't even fucking born here. Tired of you motherfuckers. Slide with sand